let's go and learn how to construct cumulative frequency distribution table and interpret the data given. Okay, so we have here, before we learn how to construct, let us understand the term cumulative frequency distribution table. This is what, this will actually help us or gives us, this gives us the running total, okay, the running total of the data The running total of the number of data, the running total of the number, number of data less than a particular, a particular data. Okay, so this is the use of a cumulative frequency distribution table. Okay, so let us now look at some examples all right let's start with the first table here the table below shows the data from 100 people interviewed about how many siblings they have in their family okay so this is how we do the cumulative frequency table first you start off with the first given frequency so these are the number of siblings that they have and the frequency meaning to say there are seven people with no siblings 25 people with one siblings Okay, so let's now check what is the cumulative frequency. First is you have to make sure that you have another column for the cumulative um, frequency table. Um, therefore, what you do, you copy the first frequency, add it to the next. So 7 plus 25 would give us 32. 32 plus 20, 24 will give us 56. 56 plus 13 would be 69. 69 plus 6 would be 75 75 plus 15 would be 90 90 plus 5 would be 95 95 plus 3 would be 98 and then 98 plus 2 is 100 actually the cumulative distribution table will also confirm whether we had completely done the frequency because you need to land your last data here all right so your last data should be your n or your total number of data okay so it's 100 people so let's go and check all right um what does this mean okay so this simply means that there are um there's 32 people okay 30 um two people have siblings that are zero to one okay so 32 people, okay, they have siblings, they have 0 to 1 siblings, alright, so that's the meaning of that, or if you go to 75 right here, therefore you would say 75 people have siblings, have um, let's say, so they, you will have 75 people have 0 to 4 siblings, okay? So you will see, okay, from the reference that you have, okay, your reference is including the data and your last data here, okay? So the data with that cumulative frequency and your data going down, okay? Again, um, this is good if this is a discrete data. Okay, remember there are two types of quantitative data. One is discrete, the other one is continuous. Okay, discrete is for the um, area for the data, it's specifically given. What if we have a data which is continuous? Okay, continuous meaning to say there is... A range continuous um, data okay so quality quantitative continuous data so the table below shows the data of 50 families interviewed about how many days did they go shopping within the entire lockdown period 
or the two months so here are their answer so we'll, let's go go and make the cumulative um, so we have here cumulative frequency okay so I need to change the ink doesn't it's not clear so cumulative frequency and then let's start making the cumulative frequency table so start with the first frequency we have 3 3 plus 20 is 23 Th 23 plus 9 is 32 32 plus 10 is 42 42 plus 2 is 44 44 plus 5 is 49 and 49 plus 1 is 50 okay so we landed at our n or the number of data now we have to check what is the meaning of this actually this cl um, class interval here you can use an inequality symbol to easier um, so that it's easier for you to to make this so you could say the number of days is represented by letter d so you would say d so zero um zero um d is greater than or equal to zero or less than five okay so this could be an interval or and also when you go and continue it will be five okay so d is greater than or equal to five but less than ten Okay, so it continued, D is greater than or equal to 10, but less than 15. Okay, so D again is greater than or equal to 15, but less than 20. Okay, and then we could say D is greater than or equal to 20, but less than 25. All right. Again, D is greater than or equal to 25, but less than 30. Okay. And then D is greater than or equal to 30, but less than 35. Okay. So this is another way to, to express the following interval because 0 to 4, right? So if the number of days is equal to 0 and less than 5, therefore that's 0 to 4. So what does this mean? This what is the meaning of all the data we see. Therefore, this says that if we pick, uh, let's say, 42, you could say that there are 42. So you would say there are 42 families. Okay. There are 52 families, 42 families that went shopping went shopping less than then you check your inclusive day inclusive days 20 less than 20 days why because the the um, equivalent um, interval to that is 15 to 19 right therefore you're also including the data here so if you want to be specific, not just the word less than, you could say there are 42 families that went shopping 0 to 19 days. Alright, so that's how we interpret the data. Okay, this is the use of cumulative frequency. Like, let's go back to the other example earlier. So you could also say here, 75 people have less than 5 siblings. Okay, so have less than 5 siblings. So meaning to say they have um, 0 to 4 siblings. So you could use less than, less than, five siblings okay so that is the same meaning so you have to if it's discrete you have to look back at the next number okay and you say it's less than that right so that's the use of our cumulative frequency table